Hello everyone, I'm Zach, and one unique problem I've been experiencing in SolidWorks for a relatively long time now is the problem of trying to get smooth animations, um, but more specifically than just animations of mechanisms, but rather animations of a camera moving. So let's say, for example, if I just wanted to open up a motion study here, and I knew that I wanted to basically do a, uh, a turnaround of this part right here. Let's say that I would start here with uh, just view, uh, views enabled right there. And then, I'm not sure why that's red, but hopefully that works out okay. But let's say that at five seconds, I wanted to be, say, looking here at that button right there. And then at uh, 10 seconds or, or nine seconds, I wanted to be behind it again, looking at it like that approximately. Hmm, that's a little bit worrying. Let's see if we can't replace that. Oh, that's worrying. Let's reset. But let's say that we're just started off about here. Um, we're gonna start off there. Five seconds, we wanna be looking at that red little eye looking thing right there. Nine seconds, we wanna be behind it, but maybe looking at it a little bit closer. And at 13, we wanna be looking at the other eye. The problem in question is that you get these kind of jagged bumps that happen. So you're looking at it like that, and then it just, it's kind of difficult to see. But um, if we reset here, There, the sudden changes in velocity of the camera are what I'm talking about. You see how it's kind of bumping and then deflecting over so that, so that nothing really looks smooth. And that's the issue in question. A lot of the time, <laughs> I haven't really seen any good solutions to this on the internet, despite looking for several months. And I actually finished the animation of a senior project of mine that I spent maybe three months and upwards of a thousand hours catting just trying to get the animation to look right at the end for the last hundred hours of work and I just couldn't figure out how to debug it. But now I think I finally figured out the workflow. So for the first thing that we're gonna end up defining is the top view and we're gonna try, or not, not actually no, we're gonna be using a 3D sketch for this. That's very important. So we're gonna open up our 3D sketch and we're gonna start off by just determining what we want our camera to be looking at. So to start off with, let's say we want our camera relatively far away, so we're just gonna need to be, this is gonna be a marathon of me 3D sketching for quite a little bit, so I'm not gonna talk too much, but um, I might end up speeding some of this part up. Basically, I'm gonna be defining points where I know the camera is going to be. And I'm gonna just do this with construction lines in a 3D sketch, like so. And I wanna just put dimensions on there just so it's a little bit easier to click on stuff and uh, not have it move around when I'm, you know, by accident. Uh, that maybe that's not enough. All right, so here we are. Um, I've defined five points effectively here that I know I want the camera to go through. And so we're just gonna connect these points with a spline. Um, no style splines or anything exotic, just a regular old spline. Do not modify any of the pointers. That's actually pretty important. Uh, any of the uh, uh, curvature controls, that's actually pretty important. So then we're gonna leave this 3D sketch and we're just gonna go into a new one. And here's where the tricks that I've discovered start coming into play. So we're going to basically set a few points of uh, construction lines such that all of the points that make up the construction lines are coincident to that 3D spline we just made. Then I'm gonna hit Control A and I'm gonna make them all equal to each other. That's really important. And then maybe just to illustrate a point, I'm gonna hide this. Right now, we know that approximately, if we were to have a, cons a camera sweep going along that path, these points are at approximately equal times away from each other. Not really because the curvature of our spline, it, it's not constant, but the more line segments you choose to have, the better it's gonna end up being. So right now that's one 3D sketch. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna know that the, my camera is gonna be at each one of these points at certain points in time. And at each point in time, I'm gonna say where I want this camera to be pointing. And I'm gonna do that just with um, some techniques that are a little bit more crude than um, SolidWorks usually 
uh, and SolidWorks users, users might be used to, but if you're used to Blender or something, like I've been training in Blender for a few weeks now, this, that's where I got the idea of doing this. So basically I'm just gonna be switching between views that are 90 degrees apart from each other that you have to make sure you're normal. If you're just one or two degrees off, weird things are gonna start happening. Points are gonna just teleport off to the horizons effectively. But here, I know that when I'm at first looking at this part, uh, I know I wanna be looking at that point. And then when I'm over here, I know that maybe I wanna be looking at uh, uh, maybe around there, which see, that's not quite right. You may want to turn off snaps um, for some uh, uh, if you have a more complicated geometry than this. Otherwise, if you have a lot of edges, it's going to be really hard to drag 3D sketches around. And you can do that in Document Properties or sorry, System Options, Relation Snaps, and Disable Enable Snapping. D disable Enable Snapping. That's kind of weird to say now that I think about it. But anyway, it doesn't really matter how long these are. Just if they stay in approximately the right direction looking down them, you're looking at what you want to see when the camera is looking at it. That's what this is all about. Lengths and whatnot, that's for later. And if you don't see what I'm doing yet, you will. Uh, just just wait. Then we know that when we're about over here, we want to be looking at, um, uh-oh. So yeah, once um, when you're drawing the 3D spline initially, if you're normal to a plane, it'll just put it on that plane, or sorry, the 3D construction line. So you may need to just manually set your coincidences like that. I know that here I want to be looking at that red eye right there. So now we're just going to go drag it from that view, then drag it from that view. And that's about the direction I want it to be pointing at. Then when I'm over here, I, I would almost want to be looking at that back face, but maybe not yet. I'd maybe want to be looking around there. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's actually about right. Let me just see there. All right, that's good. Then by the time I'm over here, I wouldn't, it looks like the line of symmetry is closer to this side. So I'd probably be looking a little bit uh, closer to the center for that one. Uh, whoop. Oh, and then if you're seeing what I'm doing with my mouse and how my camera view is changing, it's because I have, um, this is my mouse wheel mapping. If anyone wants to duplicate it, it's not, it's not perfect yet, but I've been tweaking around with it for the last few years, and this is this is especially having normal as a mouse thing. I'm a right hand I'm a right hand CAD user. I have a really complicated mouse, so I like doing it this way. Uh, so here we'd probably be looking about there rather than over there, and for the height, maybe let's get that a little bit higher up. And for this one right here, just one left after that. And well, here I want to be yeah, basically looking at that eye again. It looks like. Then once I'm over here, I want to be looking back maybe around there. Uh, well, about there. Okay, so here we are. We have at different points in time, this is the direction that we want our camera to be looking. Uh, maybe that looks a little bit too low to me now that I think about it. Let's pull that up just a little bit. All right. Now, now that I think about it, I made that original 3D sketch that I'm dealing with, I'm, this one right here. I might have made this a little bit too close to the body. I kind of might have assumed that the lens was going to be wider than, you know, I wanted it. But that, I think that's okay. Let's just see how this turns out. So now that we've hidden that, this is what we're working with. Now we're going to make another 3D sketch. And this time we're going to do the exact same thing with the construction lines that we did for the, the uh, first 3D sketch. But now we're, we need to turn relations back on. I always miss it. Sorry, we need to enable snapping again. And we're going to construct construction lines between these construction lines. Make sure that there's no perpendicular relations or anything like that. Just make sure, oh, that was a midpoint. That's unacceptable. Just make sure that you have your uh, coincidences set. Then you can hit control A and this sometimes works. You can hit equal. But yeah, but sometimes it doesn't like that. Usually um, you need to do this closer to one at a time. It doesn't really matter as long as you end up getting all of these line segments equal to each other. That's the really important thing. Uh, well, <laughs> pull that up just a little. 
the more line segments you have for your original 3D sketch, the easier this ends up being. Oh, that can't be the midpoint, that's an issue. This is, in no way is this an elegant, an elegant maneuver, I would probably say, but this, this works. I've, I've made this work three times. I, I had to make, make sure I'd, I had made this work before I tried making this video. I've been looking for some kind of solution like this for a really long time, and I, I don't want the first one that's put out there to be an incorrect one. Oh, there we go. We're getting... It looks like this one needs to be a little bit longer than there. Okay, that's about right. I think that if I just fix that point here, delete that line, there should be another one of those that's about the same length. Right there. Yeah, that's close enough. I'm gonna un... I know I locked one of these things. I oh, Maybe I didn't... see how long these are 2.2 2.2 2.2 they're all right how long is this one 2.3 so that just needs to get a little bit shorter 2.29 2.4 up to 2.6 again so looks like we need to make the rest of these a little bit longer Yeah, you really start running into issues at a certain point. Maybe up here. You're basically just trying to massage everything into place effectively. There we go. This should work. It's about 2.27. Uh, whoop. 2.45, there we go. All right, so now all of those are approximately equal in length. The fact that you have weird things overlapping, try to keep it as not weird looking as possible. Like if you have one of these lines zigzagging out and then in and then out again like that, that's not very good. But something like this, this could be okay. Basically you want as non-complex of a set of points going around coincident to these lines as you can possibly get. Then exit that 3D sketch, go to another one, and we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before with this sketch, or rather, yeah, that sketch right there. And basically we're gonna connect a spline to go, let's hide this one so that you all can see what I'm talking about. We're gonna make a 3D spline that goes through these points. There we go. Okay, so now that we have these, the we, believe it or not, this is pretty much all of the trick that you had to do. This is the trick to getting that smooth camera movement compared to what we saw earlier. So let's just go into our motion study here and just look at look real quick and see what we're gonna do. But before we actually go into that, never mind. Before we go into that, let's make our camera. So when you're making a camera, a lot of the time people just think you can set the target by points, but no, you can actually set the target by position, by uh, or rather by selection. And if you select a continuous spline like that, it automatically does a path mate. For, for years, I had been making a part that was just a point, setting that with a path mate to the curve. Anyway, this, is, this was the right move apparently all along, much to my dismay. Then you drag these both to zero, and look, that's what we want to be looking at. Usually the rotation, uh, I haven't figured out a good way to smooth out rotations yet of the camera on this path, but I'm sure I'll do that a year from now. Let's just get our aspect ratio to something that we use in the 21st century. There we go. And now, with our motion study, let's say that over the course of 20 seconds, we want this to occur. Then there, we're going to unlock, or is that re-disabled? No, we're gonna leave our, ca our camera views enabled, 
we're gonna set oh whoop start off we need to make sure that our camera view is set right there and then at 20 seconds we're gonna edit the properties we're gonna drag those both to 100 normally you could do this with significantly more complex ways but with just two points here you can get the exact smooth camera movement that you're looking for and here's the proof I've gotten smooth camera movements like this before. Ah, if I had more points in my spline, that wouldn't have happened right there. But because of how this ends up working, this is smooth, not exactly what we want, but with some finagling, this can easily be what we want. And remember how I said that if I moved the camera away, if I just modified the original sketch, how I had it, it would have looked a little bit better. Let's actually try doing that right now just to show the versatility of how everything's just driven by dimensions in this one sketch and if you want to make it different or better you easily easily can and the other the other thing i really like about this is that it's pretty self-updating um and by self-updating i mean that once i just change this one sketch ideally the other should follow suit I haven't tested that extensively. I've mainly just tested different versions of this path tracking technique and ways to try and get it a little bit better. But um, from what from everything that I've tried, this works. All right, let's see. Ah, uh, yep, minor issues there. Is that the line segments one? Yeah, that's the line segments one. So let's just retry that one more time. <laughs> there we go. problem child one all right there we go let's try that one more time let's just hide these so I don't accidentally relate something I didn't want to I think this might have screwed up our uh, camera definition earlier so I may need to fix that All right, there we go. And the reason why we were having such issues before was look at how the curvature here is really exaggerated. And remember how I said earlier that um, the more line segments you have, the less the curvature will influence the path of the point. That's effectively what's going on here. So let's hide that, show our first one, remake our camera. Hmm, there we go. Not a point. Spline and spline with a zero degree rotation. There we go. Let's set that to zero. Back into our motion study. Yes, refresh. There it's at 100. And yeah, this is what I mean. In the motion study, at least, things are, are usually, they usually remain relatively not broken. It's a lot more work, in my opinion, to remake stuff in a motion study than it is to remake stuff in a in features and parts and assemblies. The motion study is what the workflow is, at least my personal workflow, is not optimized for at all. But doing it like this, I've actually found great success in terms of smoothing out camera motions for animations. Uh, I hope you found this tutorial interesting, at least, and if even better than interesting, helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.